I know. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, Tuesday, October 17th, 2017 meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Tony, would you be kind enough to go through the roll call? Uh, sure. Uh, Chairman Harley? I'm here. <laughs> Vice Chairman Margiata here. Uh, Clerk Roberts? Here. Uh, members Hughes? Yes. Uh, Oikel? Here. Hammer? Absent. Omiki? Dean? Here. Allard? Here. Edwards? Here. Uh, Antoniak? And Silver? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> eight of us. Uh, so the first, first item on the agenda, uh, I guess I'll just call it application 1958-17-Z. CCC Construction, Care Frank Tobacco seeking a special permit and resubdivision to modify application 1884-15-C for back lane. And this was continued from the last meeting on October 3rd. So uh, a reminder for everybody, this requires that we actually get three, quarter, three quarters of everybody to vote. So that requires seven positive votes for the two waivers that are in here in particular. So. Uh, Real quickly here, there's eight of us at this point, so obviously seven of us would have to find ourselves comfortable enough to be voting for it. And not everybody was here last week. So who was here? Who was not here I, last I, week? I was That's you, you were out. I was also out, but I reviewed the minutes and familiar with the, uh, the application. Thank you. Myself also. You did? And you're, as, you're good too, Ryan? Okay, so we got eight people that are participating and looked into the minutes uh, last time around. So with that, would the applicant join us again at the microphone and uh, the hearing is open and since we familiarize ourselves with the record or been here before just a real quick summary for those who may be joining us on tv in the future <coughs> summarize what's going on okay I, I didn't bring the drawings i didn't think i needed to but okay. uh basically we're looking for the two waivers uh, temporarily um one is the right of way for the imaginary 10-foot buffer on either side and the other one is the proposed sidewalk um, to go from the approved side to the south side and then having a section of the sidewalk to be lower than the cross-section requirements per town regulations. Uh, those are the two, in a nutshell, that we're looking for the waiver on. Okay. <clears throat> so I happen to notice that um, the plan sheet that was provided to us for a potential other application tonight was useful in seeing the way the right-of-way line is proposed. So if anybody <coughs> wants a visual reference, I think that other plan shows. And in particular, at the back of 312 and 326, you can see where the proposed property line uh, has a jog in it. <coughs> and this is, of course, what we would be approving potentially as a permanent condition. Not desirable, but permanent. Uh, excuse me. Not desirable, but it could be permanent. All right. So, Peter, you could run through this sure. with us. Just, just uh, for the record, at your last meeting, you you received a rather lengthy memo from the town engineer with uh, various matters that he felt still needed to be addressed. Since that time, uh, both the applicant and the town have been working uh, to uh, update the plan and get some of the outstanding. Uh, conditions primarily with the various utilities resolved so uh, there was a there is a an October 13th revised set of plans uh, which I believe uh, y you have received um, well actually it was yeah revised October 13th sorry uh, which you have received and a memo dated October 16th which summarizes uh, the limited number of items that are still outstanding you have you should have received the memo just this evening it came in yesterday so if you want to take a quick look at that um, it is the latest uh, update from the town engineer it uh, all of the utility issues that he was concerned about in, in terms of the approvals and whether the utilities would accept uh, the revised conditions have been resolved he is suggesting that in addition to the modifications that are the two modifications that are being requested that any uh, motions uh, to approve this uh, revised subdivision uh, include uh, a couple of things, uh, particularly with the sidewalks 
uh, timing of the installation. Uh, he needs, uh, we need up updated title certificate, certificate deed and, and corporate resolution for the revised uh, right of way limits. And then obviously final plans must be filed. And then lastly, uh, the revised plans do include uh, the catch basin type C that was discussed at the last meeting. And the town engineer is recommending that um, that catch basin be installed this year uh, and no later than November 15th so that uh, the weather doesn't inter interfere with the installation of that uh, and whatever additional work is required to do that. So that is the status as of right now. So I think the big issues uh, regarding the utilities have been resolved. So in particular, that's the MDC 1A. For those of us who read the last one and thought that's where we were at, <clears throat> dated on the 13th, 1A goes away. Um, two goes away because of the because the plans all show that right that's yes. the point that's correct yes all right. so uh, there's no uh, no issues with the MDC agreeing and other utilities no they've all been worked out I'll, I'll defer oh, to right Mr. DeBacco he's Great. been uh, very much involved in that so okay fine. there were never any issues they were always fine yeah it's just a matter of having yep. to say it right all right all right other questions for the applicant or need to reiterate where we were? Yeah, it's, uh, is he going to abide by item two of the town engineer's memo? Fair question. Have you seen the uh, memo that just I came do. Out I just today? don't remember what item number two was. <coughs> yeah, uh, the drainage. At the northeast corner. I'm Get being held hostage, so I don't want to put it in, but if I don't, you're not going to give me anything, so I'm being held to, to a gun to my head, so I basically have to um, I'm asking for a temporary solution you're asking for and he's asking for permanent requirements do I have a choice no you don't know how the commission feels either I, <laughs> I feel it's needed so well, you might get a vote. I might get a vote against it if you didn't put it in so. like I said there's a gun to my head I don't have much of a choice the only thing I'm going to ask for is that November 15th ain't be wavered a little bit um, I'm trying to get the commitment of these two foundations in the ground the 15th of November is difficult because it by the time I get it drawn finalized into the site guy's hands ordered released and then try to get it going it's already the 15th the 17th of October what are, you, what are you asking for uh, I have uh, I went over there again today I don't know why I, I met your father uh, in the truck there he didn't know anything about the issue I asked him about, which uh, the, uh, the owner of site, site 16. There is no owner. There's 17 and 19, yeah. George. 17 and 19 are the two that are sold. Were the 19? 19 is finished, ready well, for the I'm foundation. about the th trees that was the complaint. Trees. Zocco property. Yeah, 326. Was, uh, the one to the, on the north side of Vinny Ave. No. So that probably okay. doesn't have a lot number. Is that 326? Is that when you're getting at? Yeah, house. The, one, the one said she, the sidewalk going through was an issue. No. Oh, house number 326 on back lane. Yes. The three yes. shrubs. No, um, back lane. She lives on back lane. It was three, she does. She lives oh, on. Back over here? Yeah, she's the house number 326, and that's the first house when you come in on the right hand side on back lane. It's that one there. This one right here. And she's got those three shrubs that she was referring to last month oh, or okay. two weeks I'm ago. I'm looking in the wrong place. No wonder yeah. I thought it was way up in here. No, no, it's it's within 50 feet of the uh, entrance when you pull in. And, uh, but this was one that had bought a lot from you, I thought, that one. No. 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 Oh, no. okay. Two have, though. The one that I'm having. bought lots, though. Yes. Uh, the Volanos and uh, the Kisses who are not here. I would not favor a fence along 326. So since you referred to it, why don't I remind everybody that there is a piece of correspondence in the file uh, dated the 11th, <coughs> October 11th, from uh, the owners of 326. Oh. And, and they have, and that's the reference to the fence. Um, I know nothing about that. Okay. They're looking to have a copy. It's from Paul Zoko, the husband who wasn't here the night of the last meeting, um, reiterating again that, you know, they don't want the sidewalk on their side and having to maintain that sidewalk over the years. 
Uh, but if the commission were to go ahead and approve this, we would ask that a six to eight foot fence be prepared or put in along the property line. So that's the reference that he's getting at. Okay. Um, so, all right, for, for those who might think that's the appropriate solution. All right. <clears throat> um, so in summary, we hope this is a temporary solution. All right, but if it isn't, if the applicant can't acquire 312 and come back here with plans to, I, I, I don't know if, is it really technically gonna be a resubdivision again next time? Because now he's got two adjacent lot or two adjacent lots and wants to subdivide it or whatever, but it's, it will be a recreation of one of the, the new lots again and having the additional property on the other side of the street will allow the sidewalk to be built on the north side of the street, right? Which is the more desirable place to have it and where we approved it the first time. In the meantime, this temporary, hopefully, but possibly permanent location requires two waivers. One is basically that it doesn't meet the cross-sectional requirements of the state, of the town's <coughs> residential building code subdivision rules um, the slope of the sidewalk is negative it goes away from the road what was the other one it's a cross-section and centering the right of way centering, centering the right of way okay and those two issues in particular require a three-quarter vote all right summarize it well enough all right uh, any questions before i open up to the public is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on the application uh this evening all right, seeing nobody, last comments or thoughts, questions? I guess just, just for the benefit of the people who weren't here, one of the questions that I did ask the town engineer last time was whether if this situation became a permanent one, whether the, you know, the location of the sidewalk on the south side and whether the offset of the right of way would create any difficulties for the town if it had to accept them as public improvements and his answer was that it was not and I also asked because it was part of the special permit criteria whether he thought there were any issues related to public health safety and so forth associated with these changes and likewise he said there were not so that frankly that made me comfortable with engineering things that are beyond my scope. Uh, appreciate you reminding us of that fact. They are parts of the approval process, right? So we're supposed to be considering those things. So thanks for reminding us. All right. If there's no additional comments or thoughts, uh, I'll entertain a motion on the hearing. Move to close the hearing. Thank you, Thomas. Is there a second? Yes, second. Thank you. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Passes unanimously. There are eight of us voting. Um, so, a motion. Make a motion. We approve application 1958-17Z uh, as submitted, including the waiver of the location of the sidewalk on the south side of the road um, and the, what was it, the cross-section uh, as well as the centering of the right of way that would ordinarily be required um, with the stipulations contained in Derek Greger's memo to Peter Gillespie dated October 16th, 2017, items 1A, 1B, and 2. Do you want to consider some flexibility on the November 15th? Um, deadline. Obviously, the town engineer wanted that done this season before you know the asphalt plants closed and, and that kind of thing. So I think that he, he felt November fifteenth was typically um, you know time enough to do that. Um, however, I, depending on the weather, there could be more more flexibility on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd be willing to give it November thirtieth. I mean, it doesn't freeze that hard usually. Yeah. And plants are pretty much closing down by then, so it's got to be done pretty much like that time frame. 
November 30th. Um, and, uh, and Derek can deal with the, that issue. All right. All right. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Thank you, George. Uh, took, takes a load off my mind that you second to do. All right. I just say I don't know how I feel about the fence, so I'd leave that to other people. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not excited about it. Yeah, neither am I. Um, I mean, and not in a positive way. Is that, is that in you? I didn't hear it in No. No, oh, but it, it's, okay. it's worth... I, but I was just against it. I don't think it helps anything. Yeah, I don't, really. I don't think so. It's all. It's since they the request of the... All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further dialogue? Not hearing any. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, so we have eight positive votes and it carries the three quarter. All right. Thank you. Let's go get that other 312 property. Yes, big pardon, uh, point of order, I guess. Um, does the resolution by implication include the uh, waivers that have been requested by the, uh, uh, by the applicant? Yeah, I think I listed those yeah. as part okay. of the, mo part of the right. motion before oh, I got I to. I didn't hear that particular aspect. Well, I was aimed that way anyway, so. Um. All right, I think we're good. We're all set. All right. We're all set. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so under new business, is there a reason to be seeing 3.1? How exactly do we deal with this? Oh, oh, you know, would you join us again for a moment? Application number, <clears throat> this is new business application number 1959-17-Z, CCC construction again by care of Frank DeBacco seeking a zone change uh, for the same properties. Would you like to, you know, suggest that you withdraw this? Um. I, I had a conversation earlier with Peter Gillespie on this one. Um, and he, he, I think he understands my frustrations that I'm having. Um, so I guess I asked two things. One, I, I, I'll, the funds that we had to use to pay, Peter said that we can request to get those reversed back to us for this hearing. Um, so I'm going to ask for that as one possibility. Um, and then two, I don't know if it's this committee or another committee to uh, look into the waiver or the requirements for um, lot liens instead of bonds for the roads. I didn't know if that was this committee that would review that or yes. wouldn't that be something with, uh, with the town. So one of the issues that I was having is the estimates that are coming from the town were twice the price of everybody else that we were getting from, from public, from the bidding that we did and we submitted them all as records. Um, but the town wants the bonds. But the regulations also, when I looked at them, said that we can do lot liens uh, to cover the cost. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I want to do for, the, for phase two and three is have the ability to do the lot liens. Um, and Peter mentioned that it was typically one lot, um, which was new to me. I didn't understand it as that way. I read it as the lot liens would be on all the lots uh, for whatever phase it was, which I was fine with. And then as we finished the development or that road, we would move or release one lot or two lots, depending on the values, and, and put it towards the last one or two of that particular phase. So in my own head, the way I was looking at it, if lot two had four lots, I would get the approval to build the road. The lien is on all four not to issue any permits until the road is complete, satisfactory, which is what the current condition of the binder and the curb. And then I can go file for my building permit. At that point, we would reevaluate the value of what's left for the top coat um, and or the sidewalk that may be still out there, and then lean one or two lots to cover that value um, instead of utilizing the bonds and continuing those expenses, um, since they're, they're tremendously high on what the estimates are from the town. Um, so that was one thing that I was going to see if we can try to figure out. Um, What's your conclusion? What did I conclude with? What did both of you conclude? Uh, we have not closed that loop. Uh, Peter doesn't have, I don't think, says we can, we can look at it and discuss it, but uh, he can't give any resolution to it. 
Um, so there, there are other options available for, for bonding purposes. Right. Ultimately, that decision is up to this commission. Right. We could do it. The we way have we suggested, but we never have particularly. We've always it, gone to it, one or two lots. You're yeah, you, you have. You have leaned uh, lots. Uh, it's, uh, from a staff point of view, not the preferred uh, bonding scenario. It's, it, that's a complicated thing. Uh, so we wouldn't normally recommend that as the first first option however there are options available to the applicant and the town assuming the values are all corresponding so um, it's not my decision to make but uh, I think it's worth taking Why a look at the options yeah, um, no it's, it's not across all the property it's across each phase so I've got after this phase I've got 13 lots left phase two I believe is five or six lots and I would lean those five or six lots until phase two road was complete. I can't get a building permit anyway until the road is complete and accepted to the standard of the curbing and the shoulders and everything is seated. Um, they won't release a building permit. So to me to have the lots under a lean and as leverage doesn't affect me it just until I'm ready to pull a permit and I can't do that anyway. And then once the road is in and done, the value of the bond, the only thing left is the overlay of the, of the, of the road, which is probably forty or $50,000, and that's the value of uh, twice, three times as one lot would cover that. Um, so then I would look for one lot to be released, and we can go lot by lot, I don't care, uh, as they sell and release one and then keep working on that, sub on that phase. I'm, I'm still I'm struggling I don't know the process all that well <clears throat> but I'm struggling with why you would have a lien on any more than you need to have right you do it all on one maybe it's the full value well, of the property right? you know pick a number say the lot is worth a hundred thousand and the roads worth three hundred thousand yep I give you one lot you don't cover yourself no, no right so, you need so to I would just say take all five because I'm, I can't utilize any of them at this point until I get to a certain point in it Oh yeah, but you can't. You can sell the other two. That's what I guess I'm I can. I can. I can't. I can sell the lot, but I can't pull any permits. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way I read it, right, Peter? Mm -hmm. So without pulling a permit, I can't build on it. There's no point in selling a lot other than taking a deposit. And at that point is when the road is complete. I'd come and do the permit and ask for the release of lien on whatever okay. lot I was working on. So, so I, I guess there's options. We're not going to resolve it here tonight. I think. Can I ask Peter a question? Does it cost more to lean all of them or as many as he wants? Uh, no, it just restricts it, it restricts his ability to do anything with the lots. That's really the extent of it. Yeah, I mean, it's basically putting up more collateral than you need to. Right. No, you wouldn't. Right. We wouldn't take all. We would only no, take the value. It ain't cost of the town to do. No. The, no. Well, it would be more cost. Well, the legal aspect of it. The defaults on building the road. Now we have to take over the property, sell the property to finish building the road versus if it's just a bonding right. company. Fair enough. It probably is more risk to the town, but it's a it's a process it's we allow, process. right? Right. Yeah, I mean if we didn't want to do it, we wouldn't have that option available. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, right. so so appreciate you having the discussion. I think you hear a a, a willingness to do it as okay. as maybe appropriate. But and then the other one was just to see if I can get the refund on on the fee that was required for today. Oh, uh, Peter said that he couldn't do anything, but unless the staff was willing to help out, they would refund that oh. or to a portion of it. This is on the second one that we're not going to hear effect. Yeah. If, if you withdraw it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't withdraw it, we'll hear it. Uh, I don't know. What was, what was that value? I, I think the fee might have been $400. I can't recall. Uh, however, there are expenses that we've incurred to do the legal notices and things like that so if we were to do that we would have to analyze what those costs have been and then if there's a balance available I, d I don't see why not we haven't done any staff review we haven't spent really any time on the zone change application so there are no costs from that it's just a matter of whatever legal uh, complications we had to, to get it in the Hartford current okay so, so you'd be in favor of a partial refund after expenses have been exactly after. yeah just cover any yep. actual out of pockets associated with it right um do you need an official motion from us on that i I, I think maybe after it's withdrawn and if yeah. that's the way you'd like to go i would just yeah, yeah a motion to Make direct a, staff to you know uh, technically we don't have the authority to just give the funds back but if you direct us uh, so we will do that okay that sounds reasonable to you sounds from, perfect. from delta yep. okay so you're the applicant. Would you uh, 
care to withdraw the application? I would love to withdraw the application. We appreciate that. All right. So we don't need to do anything officially on it. It's withdrawn. Um, so I'll entertain a motion from somebody about making. Uh, no, we never opened. Oh, never, never really opened. Never opened. A motion on then we'd keep uh, doing the Delta. <laughs> Thank you. Would somebody else like to second that? Second. Thank you, Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? All right. Thank you. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Next item on the agenda. Other business, 4.1. A discussion regarding site plan, plot plan, as built requirements, revisions to the zoning regs. Right. This is all you, Peter. I forgot to bring it again. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be brief. Um, and I if you want me to go to the mic, wow. <laughs> right. please right. identify yourself. Are you going to make them get up with the mic? <laughs> That's not an application. So you let me have the inset camera all to myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, guy, just for the record, uh, Peter Gillespie, Planning and Economic <laughs> Development uh, Manager, Director, uh, Home Residence. Um, <laughs> and I apologize if you did you not did you not did you get this packet in your did you get this information again in your new, new packet? No. Uh, no, and I okay. forgot to bring it from the old one. All right. Uh, so for those of you, which appears to be all of you, who don't have it in your packets, uh, I, I apologize for that. Um, so at your l last meeting, we handed out a packet uh, which basically is proposing changes to your uh, zoning regulations as it deals with our plot plan requirements. Uh, additionally, proposed changes to the as-built record drawing requirements that are in your zoning regulations. And then lastly, proposed changes to your site plan requirements as detailed in your zoning regulations uh, in Appendix A. Uh, the town um, engineer uh, has uh, been working on this along with the zoning officer and myself to bring our uh, requirements for information submission up to speed. Uh, we have gone through all three sections of, of your zoning regulations as it relates uh, to those requirements um, and have drafted suggested uh, language changes. Um, they are, um, as far as we're concerned, mostly administrative in nature. It's not the kind of detail that you guys necessarily get into, but it's certainly information that we feel needs to be updated and brought up to today's standards. Uh, so we went through an effort to look at uh, recent uh, site plan, plot plan, and as-built record drawing submissions uh, to make sure we were not being uh, unreasonable in our information requests uh, so that um, we weren't putting additional burdens uh, on uh, applicants in that regard. I did also uh, ask some of the staff at Close Jensen and Miller to look at these proposed this proposed languages and we, and we took some guidance uh, from them so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with uh, the draft that you have in front of you uh, without going into all of the uh, specific requirements uh, we wanted to simply bring you up to speed and if there was no strong objections uh, we would uh, initiate a process to uh, in order to change these regulations we would have to go through a zone regulation amendment process and do the normal notification schedule a public hearing and go through a public hearing uh, for uh, all of those changes so um, if there's no strong objections or if you want to look at this again at the next meeting uh, we could do that and then in, and then submit an application and schedule a hearing but we were simply looking for your guidance as to whether we could proceed as drafted or whether you wanted to spend a time or create a subcommittee to really analyze these in more detail. So that's kind of where we are at at this point in time. Excuse me. I have a, a question with regards to uh, the, the requirements for his belts. I noticed that there is an absence of, of requirements for uh, you know, filing of his belts in an electronic format. And given the fact that uh, you know drawings, mylars, and so forth do require storage space, which is pretty expensive, and my own experience in the development area, in which you know when I was doing projects as 
as late as 20 years ago, uh, we were beginning to require people submit not only the as built you know, the contractors to submit as built in mylar and paper, uh, but also on an electronic disk. And I noticed you know, that's not a part of this. Is there any explanation or consideration of that issue? I, I asked the town engineer to spend a little bit of time researching that, and uh, uh, surprisingly, he hasn't found a lot of communities who have established the standards for it. Um, there's a little bit of a pushback from the surveying community on that. Uh, they have propri proprietary concerns that once they release their drawings to the town, it becomes a matter of public record, therefore um, could be subject to another uh, professional's uh, use, uh, shall we say? Um, so there has so, so I, I, you, you make a very good point, um, and I think um, we are certainly going in that direction uh, upstairs in the engineering department. But he uh, didn't get <coughs> to the point of putting it into this draft. But we certainly can further research that and get a, get a kind of a lay of the land. Um, I think at the end of the day, it would simply. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, simply be a matter of just requiring them to submit, you know, a, a PDF rather than, right. you know, the other versions of the drawings. But there seems to be some pushback um, in that community about doing that. So I, I, you know, professionally and personally have no concerns about doing that, and it, it's it's really should be the standard rather than the, you know, exception to the rule. So we can certainly do that and, and add that in here. They're, they're public documents, anyways, yeah, right? Yeah, they're not so, proprietary. Right. You can't, you can't say that once I give something to you that you paid me to give you. Right. That that's not yours to do with what you want. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure of the why the concern is there either, but uh, it's just we, yeah. Petty so. Is what it is. Yep. George. Uh, yeah, Peter, did did you guys invent all of this, or did you? Pull it from other towns, or a combination of all this. Uh, all of the above. Uh, Derek uh, was formerly in uh, Manchester, of course, yeah. and they went through that process a couple of years back. So I think, um, you know, he's borrowed a lot of the language and standards from what they were doing. Uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I, I can't really say. I have reviewed those. Uh, he he took the lead on each one of those, and I responded sure. with revisions uh, in, in, and I did look at other communities as well, not just Manchester. So I, I basically, overall, after I got through going through it a bit, with a lot of nitpicking ideas and comments, uh, and I'll give that to you. Like, sure. But I, I think this has been badly needed for a long time. I think we've been pretty superficial with, from what I can see, exists to what really is needed. And then on the other hand, there's a lot of detail in here now required and a lot of things that I'm beginning to say, but I hope it doesn't overdo it. I mean, going from one to the other I, bothers me a little bit. Uh, and of course, it's going to help engineering firms <laughs> too, architectural, because they're going to have to provide more. And we haven't been very good at that. And, uh, we end up, as I said earlier, we end up getting more uh, anyway, uh, yeah. as part depending on the on the firm that's doing the the plan submission, some provide all sorts of additional information above and beyond what we require. And so, so uh, we went through that effort and took a look at what we've been getting recently to make sure we weren't really going way way beyond what and you know you what the contemporary. Nice happy medium I think so. I'm, I'm it it, it certainly can be revised and tweaked in 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 you know a bunch of areas as as you've said. So. Um, but I think they're reasonable in a reasonably good uh, format at this point to maybe start thinking about going forward. Has Mil did Miller's firm or anyone else uh, suggest that you are missing some major areas? Or uh, they actually. Um, well, this might be hard. To yeah, implement. some of, some of the comments were uh, you know some of it was overkill for certain standards. So what we did in a couple of cases, we uh, added a section at the end that made some of the information only as if necessary needed. if needed, uh, you know, not part of the normal, but the town has the authority if necessary and as appropriate to require the additional information. When you said a pro as appropriate or if needed, you mean you guys would make that decision? Yes. Okay. Or the commission would have to make that decision if it's a site yeah. plan that's being submitted. Um, would come in with or without it. With right. You know, if there was a particular issue that required 
you know, some sort of additional analysis that would be required by the commission or in the case of plot plans by the town staff. And you guys never get into as built, so you never see those. So that's really a staff responsibility as well. Yeah, I guess just that was kind of the only thing that I had was that, you know, if what we're talking about is moving tables from inside a restaurant to outside, I don't think we need topographic analysis. Right. And, you know, an A2 survey of the entire shopping center, but. Drainage basin study or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we've seen enough literally on the back of the placemat ones over the years that, you know, to have some kind of waiver if information is not necessary for the proper adjudication of the application. And you, in there, you didn't refer to the other advisory, not advisory bodies, one is advisory and then the other's in and what one and so forth. Uh, references I didn't see sometimes in there, but you know, it's obvious what who gets it when yes. it gets here, right? Mm -hmm. It's not an issue. Okay. Well, I'm going to admit to not having read it. Mm -hmm. um, so and I think can, all you're really looking yeah. for is direction on moving forward, right? Because it's going to be another whole review process with the public, right? Correct. So yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, you know, there's that process will flesh out you know, whatever changes, and if it takes a couple of meetings and we have to go back and review them and revise them, so be it. So I just was, we've, these have been um, sitting around um, waiting for me to push them forward. So, um, you know, in the, in the effort to work with the town engineer, and, you know, realistically, we're coming up to the winter anyway, so probably not gonna see a lot of uh, applications and and you know building permit applications particularly so we've got some time but nevertheless I think um, you know I'll, I'll I can take another look at these with the town engineer and the zoning officer and you know with with some of your comments in mind and then um, you know pick a date down the road where we can have a hearing on it do some PR ask some of the other engineering firms and you know folks who do work here in town to weigh in and see what kind of commentary we get back Okay. Your average citizen is not going to care too much about this. It's more of a technical uh, exercise. So that's really the guidance I was looking for. Okay. Has the town ever looked into like a set of standard drawings? We, ha the, we have, um, and we have talked about that a couple times, even when Mike Turner was here. Uh, we, the only standard drawings we presently have are those in the back uh, appendix of the subdivision regulations. So we talked about... Uh, establishing um, additional standards for parking lots and drainage and all that kind of stuff. We just never got around to it. There is um, actually some money earmarked to do that effort. So uh, it is something I think when the dust settles a little bit with the town engineer, maybe even over this winter, we can start working on that. Sometimes those are easier to update than a long, like that charter document that's online that you can go through. Right. Like where you see seven percent, you don't really know what that means, <laughs> unless you're looking at it. And, and actually, I th I think Manchester has yeah some has, towns sometimes has have that them, already. So and you just find them as whenever you can. Right. When you're dealing with like a state road and a local road, and you're trying to figure out who likes what, who's more stringent. Yeah, and I've started talking to the town engineer about that because he has um, Mike Turner had a preference for certain types of stormwater management treatment this engineer has his own so we probably need to go through that exercise with the commission and make sure we're all on the same page it's one thing for us to require you know a french drain in a particular setting versus you know some other treatment and uh you know we should have standards so that it's consistent across the board so that one engineer doesn't submit something and another engineer gives us another thing so there's certain value in doing that as well it probably would not be in the zoning regulations or the subdivision regulation. It would be a separate sort of guide Correct. guideline. So, um, but certainly we would probably go through a process with the commissions to make sure everybody's on the same page with that. All right. So you don't need a motion. We'll just see that sometime coming up, right? That's correct. Yep. All right. Anything else? Okay. Was it minutes? George, did you read the minutes? Where are you going? There are parts of them that We're not I don't done yet. like, and oh. I will vote against them. Oh, where are you going? They're correct. You don't want me to go through this. There's about two or three pages. That's the problem. Where are you going? 
I'm going over to see the minutes. We're doing the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving. Oh, no. Okay. So does anybody have any comments on the minutes? You want, to, you want us to table them then, and we'll um, yeah, I think you can give us your comment? Take a look at two or three pages. They're really disjointed with one of the sentences. You want to can give they us be, page numbers? Yeah, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the thing. Okay. Actually, get, give it to Mary Lou. She can. Yeah, okay. Is your handwriting good? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I make a motion to table the minutes God from knows, October 3rd. I try 30. to read my own notes here. <clears throat> Thank you, Rich. Is there someone who would second that? Table. table. I'll second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Um, yeah, you don't. You guys don't care. What, how many does that leave? One, two, three. Right. So, so Mary Lou. Th how many? You don't have five. We do. Okay. You can, you can, I don't think you have to have been here to to, to, to do table that. it. Yeah. Good point. Well, I'm just. Good point. <laughs> All right. I wasn't here. I don't know whether we should table these minutes until people who were here look at them. All right. So, so Mary Lou, we tabled the, the uh, minutes, okay? All right. We voted anonymously. Yes. All right. Is there anything else? Are, are there any uh, applications coming? We have two, two applications, uh, I think, okay. scheduled. Denise, for next meeting, two applications. We have a... A mobile gas station, electronic LED, LED uh, topper signs that, um, because we don't have regulations for that, has to come to you guys. And then secondly, I think we have an oversized accessory structure. Accessory structure. Yeah, so. 16? Yeah, we've, we always advise them to try and, but this was a, uh, a special deal that was available on the lot that they, they wanted to, they were going it to, it would be more expensive to go with the under 200 square square foot version <laughs> so can we give you like a 10 percent can they put it on an angle yeah i do think we that's another thing that that's a we talked about this a while ago and I, you you didn't really want to mess with the requirements but they're um everything's bigger now so at least give you guys a subjective give, <laughs> give, give, give us uh yeah or if you say so or kick it up <laughs> kick it up a little bit or so i i think we need to uh take a look at that uh, language so you don't have to Blaster. you don't have to deal with with those things uh they seem to be coming in more and more uh so i frequently. was so i was so. going to ask you if you thought <clears throat> the proposed changes that you know we just got done talking about yeah uh were inclusive of many of the things. little things yeah. that we talk about from time to time and i'd be happy to with. i'd be happy to do a little packet it might add a couple of weeks but we've been working on some of those justin had drafted some language in the regulations for certain things like that so uh, I would uh, be uh, very willing to do that, and I think it would be good for uh, uh, residents as well as the commission. Okay. So I, I can certainly do that. All right. Nothing big on the horizon. Oh, you know. So just uh, I gave you a copy of my report in case there's any for, for October, in case you had any questions on, on what's going on. We did actually, we went out to 170 Ridge Road and met with the developer and his engineers and walked through the building. I don't know if any of you have ever been in that building. Um, very interesting. Um, you know, just given the age of it and um, yeah, interesting, I, I nice. Or? The other day, the, and I've been going to go up for a month and a half. Didn't Rich and you kind of say the profile was lower than you thought? Oh, no. The other no. Is this the other building, or is this? This is a 170 Ridge. The correct. Uh, the this is the Jordan Lane and Ridge. Yes, the, the corner. CCMC. Oh, Jordan yeah. Lane. CCMC oh, School. Sorry, I yep. Okay. Yep. Tall drive. So they are um, starting to move forward uh, with that project. It won't be immediate, but they're working on plans. They just had a survey updated and found some things. So, but yeah, we walked through the building, and it's it's a very interesting building. So. Uh, What's that uh, picture that, like the shining? It has a certain <laughs> movie character to it um, <laughs> between the basement and the upper levels and the stairwells and the yeah I, you know so um, you know so maybe maybe even at some point you know if before they file if we wanted to do a, if you wanted to do a site it's that interesting <laughs> <laughs> for me it, it, you know kind of interested in those kind of things but you may not be so much but why you know it, but it's um but the school left thing 
everything's bigger. Mm. Um, so, uh, yes, some of the rooms were just literally left like they were there. Mausoleums. Yeah, yesterday. Kind of really? name tags on the you know door of the nurse and th you know things like that. It was just a graded paper on the floor. There the was some stuff. The nurse artwork was still there. There was artwork and your kid with his head on right. his head. <laughs> 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 been in detention for twenty years. Are you going to suggest it be added to the historic district? No, that would no. not uh, oh. not be my ad advice. But uh, nevertheless, yeah, at this time of year, it's kind of an interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, it's perfect time. Yes. <laughs> What's going on with Carmen Anthony's? So Carmen Anthony's was purchased earlier, sold earlier this year to the uh, gentleman who is the president of or owner of the Hartford Elevator Company. So initially we thought he was going to move his, the elevator company business there, and uh, he, is, he is not. He is uh, pursuing uh, reopening it as a uh, restaurant. Um, it's, so it's not a change of use, and he's just redoing the outside. But the building is quite honestly a bit of a wreck uh, some pipes burst the basement filled up with water at one point fire department ha so it's um, so he's really having to put a substantial amount of work uh, and time into that uh, so he may be he may have to come in to you for approvals he's talking about adding a, an outdoor patio kind of for the restaurant and making some other changes so uh, but he's really simply working right now on you know, finishing the roof, securing the building for the winter so that he can do some work on the inside uh, over the winter time and then determine, um, you know, his next step. So he, uh, I've given him, you know, the uh, limitations that are, uh, you know, that go with the property in terms of the number of seats and how many parking spaces he has so that he understands he has to work within those, um, those limitations. But it will be reopened at some point in the not so distant future as another restaurant. Thank you. Good. So we need more reference. And then the other thing you should know about that um, won't necessarily be coming to you unless they is 24 Maple, which is the former New Britain Candy Company building. Um, Joe Sulo, who owns um, Restaurant Supply up in Hartford, uh, purchased the property and is moving his business, which is a distribution business, restaurant supply business, into the building. He did have. Believe it or not, that property is in the historic district, mm -hmm. so it had to go through the historic district commission review process for a new, a new facade, um, and it had to go th to ZBA because he's adding as part of the facade in the front. It projected into the front yard, but he's not changing the use, so it won't necessarily have to come to this commission. So you may see, uh, actually, you've, he's already started uh, working on some of the, you know pavement and loading dock improvements but uh, so you should just be aware of that as well he's probably going to put half a million dollars into the building and um, so uh, that's another one that uh, you might see and you might not necessarily uh, might not necessarily come in front of you and then lastly um, the clearinghouse auction gallery property sold last Thursday uh, I think it's the same group that came in front of you uh, before uh, I never they came in for pre-application, yeah. so I don't know that they're going to do. I don't think they're going to do exactly the same thing. So you will be um, hearing about that at some point in the future. I don't know how far into the future that will come back in for permits, but uh, just be aware that that did sell uh, as well. So, all right, thank you. Okay, uh, Peter, do you do you, are you seeing in the commercial strips? Uh, shopping centers a lot of vacancy more than normal I don't think I no see it. it's I mean, the I, I've seen it elsewhere but I'm not seeing no, it it's, here in Weathersfield. it's the other way around the only so Weathersfield Shopping Center has a couple of vacancies but those were um, planned vacancies because he was attempting to lure a couple of tenants into the building and he was asking some of the tenants in next to it to downsize so we just got a building permit application for Weathersfield Shopping Center f to add a K Jewelers and an Ulta Beauty. Um, there's a couple of vacant spaces towards the Friendlies side of the shopping center. And then I think the, um, what's the children's used clothing? Once Upon a Child is downsizing to make some additional space for one or one or both of those tenants and they're going to put a new facade on, on above that, those spaces. 
I think those are the only vacancies that he had, so he will be filled. And then in the golf brook shops, I think the only vacancy in golf brook shops is there's a space by Buffalo Wild Wings, which Buffalo Wild Wings pays for, and it's vacant. And they, I don't know why they don't. I don't. I don't know. We were actually we were just talking about that today. It's been vacant ever since they. It's a weird little space. That's I think the only vacancy in Golf Brook. Um, the shopping center up, up on the north, however, um, which had uh, the hardware store, um, that one uh, is different. That one has quite a few vacancies and some significant space. But the other, um, you know, shopping centers uh, are pretty. They're holding their own. Yeah, yeah. There's a few scattered empty spaces here and there. The on, you know, the on site the uh, computer shopping issue and its impact upon commercial structures and yeah. in some places it's get they're getting hit higher well retail is different but we're seeing other yeah. tenants fill the spaces whether it's offices or other yeah, kinds right. of things but you're seeing some retail too so um so yeah we're we're doing we're doing pretty well considering some other towns well, i saw some action outside of the it's that building with the red awnings next to the beaver brook right uh we he had a lease for that there was somebody yeah and they Saw somebody out front with plans. Yeah, so yeah. When, when was that? Oh, man, this might have been like three, four weeks ago. Okay, I think that interested party has come and, come and gone. But, um, he's yeah, he's ready to, you know, he's finished with his site improvements. and mm -hmm. um, We do have a couple of ribbon cuttings coming up uh, for Beaver Brook uh, Animal Hospital next week, Thursday, is it? Thursday. At noon. And then we have one Tuesday. At noon for uh, uh, El Pollo Guapo up on the Berlin Turnpike. So, if you're around, uh, particularly for the food one, um, mm -hmm. if you haven't been in there, you know I'd recommend you go yeah, in there, you and in try there, it out. You should definitely go. It's very good. So, so, um, so keep that in mind. Next week we've got a, a couple of ribbon cuttings coming up. Motion, please. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> See you in a couple weeks. Is it a couple weeks or is it it's, three weeks? It's the Wednesday after Election Day, so it's not Election Day, so it's a little different schedule for the next meeting.